Good afternoon, everybody. This is Adrienne Montgomery with ERP VAR. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm so pleased to introduce Mark Rude Health today. He's a partner account manager over at Acumatica. He's the one that you'll be talking with when you come on board with Acumatica or talking you through all the details of the, the partner program and uh, why you should be considering adding Acumatica to your ERP portfolio. So I'm going to go ahead and let Mark get started to do the further introduction. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thanks, Adrian. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And um, excited to do uh, introductions for part two of this webinar series on uh, Acumatica's marketing program. Um, so I'm on the call today as well as um, Scott Koblenz, our Director of Partner Recruitment, who um, many of you may be talking to in the future, those prospective partners on the call. Um, Scott has a ton of experience in um, in the ERP space, and um, so it's a great resource and enjoy working with Scott. Um, so a few introductions here. I'll actually start with um, Cliff. So Cliff is actually VP of Sales and Marketing at Quantum Leaf. Um, he's an experienced sales manager with a demonstrated history of working in the cannabis and hemp industry, as well as SaaS and IT cloud industry. And um, then also Tyler Mullen. Tyler is a marketing manager at Kensium who's responsible for all marketing at Kensium, which is a reseller and software vendor for Acumatica, Magento, and Big Commerce. Uh, his leadership and extensive experience in marketing operations, content strategy, and analytics guides Kensium's B2B sales strategy. Um, the next person we want to introduce is Donna Krisik. Uh, really enjoy working with Donna. Donna is responsible for our partner marketing programs. Um, so as you can see her background there, she was at Roosevelt University in Chicago. Um, and between this VAR she worked with before it was acquired by Crestwood, um, and then seven years at Crestwood, she has 12 years experience working with, um, with VARs. And now we're very happy to have her as our Director of Partner Marketing and Programs. And um, so she is instrumental in helping our partners um, gain market share and effectively market their Acumatica practices. So um, we're happy to have Donna here today um, doing part two of the, the, the webinar series on our marketing programs. And if you did not get a chance to participate in part one, uh, we will send out a link to that recording so you can get the full picture um, of the program. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Donna. Great, awesome. Thank you so much, Mark, for that lovely introduction. Uh, I'm happy to be here today for part two of our session on how to launch your practice and accelerate your existing practice. So just to focus us um, to begin with, you know, launching a practice includes a lot of areas to it. When we're going to stick to just the marketing aspect today, and we'll cover um, the eight steps that we recommend most partners focus on around the functional areas of marketing and tactical how tos on how to do that. Um, then Kensium and Quantum Leaf have graciously provided some real world examples for us. We've got some resources, training tools, and and groups available at the end. So let's go ahead and get rolling. So last time we chatted, step one was finding out who you are, what you're good at, and uh, who your best customers are. So one of the things that a lot of partners make the mistake of is relying on the tried and true. We've been around for a long time and people trust us, but the way that we think you really go about that is asking your best customers why they chose you and what they value from you. So the thing that I wanted to focus on here, um, what are the criteria for a best customer? Do people, are all customers created equal and they, they really aren't? So for us, an ideal customer 
someone who is easy to do, to do business with, who likes you, who trusts you, and who keeps coming back and spending money with you. Because we all know there may be clients out there that we've had that are wonderful, heart of gold kind of folks, but they're using the minimal features of software and they aren't ever going to use anything else. So I would argue they probably don't constitute a best customer. They're certainly wonderful to have in your portfolio, but I would look through that lens and try and get to 10 if you can. And then here is what I use when I was at Crestwood and we were doing um, other consulting for our clients. These are the actual questions that we would ask. And once you start asking, it, it doesn't take very long for you to build a really strong portfolio of questions and answers that you could pull out a whole bunch of quick wins, um, Number four is actually my favorite question because some people joke with you, some people have some serious comments, but you always get some kind of really great nugget from that by putting them in the leadership shoes. So these are my favorites. I will, you know, you'll share this deck, but from here, you'll have so much information you probably uh, won't know what to do with it. And on that topic, I would stick to 10 questions if you can, because you're really going to take an hour probably with this. And that's probably as much as you can realistically ask for from someone right out of the gate. Um, and I would be respectful of that if you find yourself wandering into over an hour that you ask their permission if you're gonna go longer, if you're really on a good topic. And on that same tactic, I would try to avoid everybody adding questions to your list because once you get them on the phone, you you kind of want to take advantage of that captive audience. So I would really stick to your topic and get what you need and be respectful of your time. Um, using the information. Okay, so you've got this, this great bank. You've talked to three or four customers. And um, now what do you do with it? So I tracked mine in Excel. You can use whatever tool you want to, but what I made sure that I highlighted for anybody I was sharing it with were, okay, quick fixes. Anybody who said something was broken somewhere in our process, whether it was dealing with the support desk or how to reach someone or the information on our website, whatever it was, all of those quick fixes, those are, you know, a win right out of the gate that you can take and follow up on. Then the key reasons that they liked you when they met you and the reasons that they keep coming back to you, those are what you're going to use to write all that wonderful copy on your About Us page and on your product pages. Make sure to try and solicit some specific things, not just, hey, you guys are awesome, because that's not going to help you a ton but some skills or traits or business industry specific things that you've helped them with. And then the really key here on quotes, because this is where you're gonna get a gold mine of people saying, oh, hey, XX person is just the best thing ever. Whenever I call, they do this, or you're gonna get a lot of those kind of things. And then part of the questions that I always asked included, okay, if you were going to look for this service today, you know, if you needed to replace it, what would you search for? Because I know what I think our customers would look for, but nothing's better than getting it straight from them. So I assembled mine into a raw data report, and then I would pull out each of these areas in an executive summary and distribute that to our stakeholders. And then you can use it as your map to improve your business. All right, step two. We started about evaluating your website and starting with the home page that it needed to be really super clear what you do so that people don't leave. You know, at Trustwood, you know, there were a multitude of reasons that somebody could land on our site. You know, there was a Crestwood that's a town in Illinois that had nothing to do with us. There was a Crestwood that was a, an old folks home. There was a Crestwood limo service. And I cannot tell you how many requests for limo reservations I got via email. <laughs> so there's a lot of, of reasons that somebody could land on your site. And 
you want them to know immediately that they're in the right place. And so to be clear about what you do, who you are, and what who you do those services for, so your audience. So when someone lands, they know, hey, I'm in the right place. This was a good um, visual that we did that. But how do you know if that's working, if what you have there is working? What I do is we use Google Analytics and we track our bounce rate for our homepage because that's going to tell you if someone's landing there and staying. Um, I took a random partner and their bounce rate for their homepage, not bad, right around 60%. So that can be for any number of reasons. Sometimes people come to your website and all they want to know is your phone number or they're looking for your address or for the email to support or for something they can get on the home page and they leave. So that can be responsible for a higher bounce rate. But really, bounce rate is, is yours. You shouldn't necessarily be comparing it to anybody else but yourself. So I would say take a look at it today. And then in Google Analytics, take a look at it, maybe what it was the same period um, last month and the same period a year ago. And then track it going forward by making little tweaks and trying to make your messaging more clear and succinct and give them things to do on your site. And you'll start to see improvements there. Some other things that you could do in Google Analytics to help on this defining, you know, improving your website and your homepage review the path that your visitors take. So if you go into Google Analytics under behavior and behavior flow, you get this nifty little chart, which looks a little confusing, but it will show you the path that customers, that visitors take. And it shows you, I didn't include a lot of detail because I'm using this from an actual partner, but this will show you where your customers go from your homepage. And and the next thing I would recommend that you pay attention to are the places where they exit. So you can go to behavior, site content, and exit pages, and you'll see a list of those as well. And you can start to figure out, is there something on that page that they're exiting from that I can add? A link, um, a call to action, something to download that you can use to keep them on that page longer. All right, some other areas on improving your website. This is just for those folks who are already Acumatica partners, but I strongly encourage you to get your partner ID from us and use our widgets because these are a no-brainer for your, your product pages. We've got all of these tools that you can use. All you have to do is plug in your partner ID and it spits out HTML code that you copy and put on your website. And it's always updated. You don't have to worry about maintaining that data. Super simple way to do it. So then last time, step three is creating your plan. I try and advise partners to keep it simple. Um, so Crestwood, for a long time, our goals were around net new ads. And with this new model, volume and velocity and subscription, recurring revenue, that all changed. So our goals became more around recurring revenue and selling subscriptions. And in a way, at first it was really challenging, but then it actually opened things up a bit for us because we could focus on existing customers and transitioning them to a subscription model. We could focus on upselling in a subscription way, and it really kind of helped. So we changed our goals, but your goals are going to be yours and track them however you want them. But when you come up with that plan, when you start to create your plan, you've got your main goals, whatever those are, net new ads, upsells, selling a product or service that you offer specifically, a dollar amount per person, whatever you have, then you need to map it to your tactics and you have to measure. So here's a calculator that we use and that's available to all of our partners that you plug in whatever your goal is and you can change this as to be something different than a customer ad. 
you plug in your close rate and it spits out the number of suspects or visitors, people who are taking some sort of action on your site or responding to something that you're sending to them. And from there, you know, the next piece that a lot of partners miss is the tactical piece. So you take the, that number. So if I need a, a total of 120 opportunities to meet my goal, I needed 6,000 suspects. Where am I going to get those from? Well, I've got a couple of outbound email campaigns. I've got my website that I'm optimizing. It's got a bunch of landing pages with offers on them. I've got some trade shows I'm going to. I'm doing remarketing or pay-per-click. I'm doing a blog series. I'm being a guest on some, some webinars. So you can map this out and these tools are available to any partner and it does all the math for you. And this is what you'll use at the end of the process when you're matching up and trying to measure your results. Okay, is your website performing? Are you going to get those 600 that you need or are you gonna fall short and where are you gonna make that up? Then you take those two calculations and this is what I ask for from partners as their final plan. I think it should be three tiles, three pages, three slides, doesn't have to be um, complicated, just two or three bullet points about your goals. These were some samples of what we recommend in our template and then how you're going to get there and what's your objective. Is it a closed deal? Is it revenue? Is it being partner of the year? Is it something different? And put that in whatever format you like and you're done with your plan. Step four. So the basic buyer's journey. We went over this last time and talked about the different sections in the buyer's journey and what people are trying to solve for in each one of those. And most of us know that we all deal with the same competitors and the same products. So we've got a good idea of what people are looking for when they go out there. So what you wanna do is answer those questions with things like this. And this is not an exhaustive list, but these are the types of things that people are going to want in each different stage. And you can use this to prioritize what you spend your money on when you're creating something or repurposing something. Step five was creating your starter content and the elements of your main product page. You'll need some compelling content, and I know that a lot of partners struggle with creating that. Where do I get it? What should I talk about? You know, they don't want to be too product focused because a lot of your visitors are probably going to go to Acumatica or a publisher site to get that kind of information. They don't necessarily need it from you again. So they struggle with that. I think um, video, why us, appropriate images that you own, and sections that let people self-select or self-identify are the best ways to start your initial, if you want to call it a product page, but an Acumatica page or whatever you happen to be building, is give them the opportunity to say, hey, I am looking for X or I am this kind of person, I need Y, and then have a path that they go down to get that information. Um, we offer our partners the opportunity to guest blog on acumatica.com and we get tons and tons of traffic so it's a really highly sought after spot that we give out we only give out two a month and i've actually had partners come to me and say i don't know what to write about and so these are all links that you can use to figure out what to write about if you really don't know. I think the best source of this information is usually your support desk for how to and help the most common things there. And your consulting team, your implementation team is, you know, what are, what are they doing that's new or different? Those are often under used sources of content. But if you're really at a loss and you don't have time to ping your team, these will help you if you look and just enter in some quick keywords, you'll be off to the races. Other sources, I can't say enough good things about software publishers. That's one area that we actually shine, is we produce scads and scads of content. 
and a lot of it i'd say i would say probably 80 percent of it goes unused by others we use it for ourselves absolutely but i don't see a ton of adoption and, and use of our content that we are producing ad nauseum and it's actually pretty good all you have to do is take it and use your own spin on it so and we're not the only publisher you know, there's tons of us out there you can take whatever content happens to resonate, tweak it, put your spin, your, your opinion, your experience on it, and you've got content that's resonating. Another thing that I think um, people don't take advantage of is surveying your industry. So if you've got uh, an industry niche that you focus on and you're going to a trade show for that, why not survey your list with a question about industry trends or their biggest headaches or what they solved this year and put together a little report that you can give out at that event saying hey you know would you like an industry trend report that we calculated from our 500 contacts of course they would everybody wants that kind of stuff and it's so low cost to do and high impact and people want to give you their opinion i get those kind of things about marketing uh, surveys all the time and as long as they're going to share the results with me I'm usually happy to participate and um, there are group blogs out there and I know ERP VAR is has some resources around that so definitely check that out forums um, like I said your support desk and then industry groups and trade shows often their websites are full of good questions that you can use to create problem-solving content all right let's move on to step six creating offers and landing pages so when you're talking about offers just to define it an offer is just something of value that they want so we call them assets sometimes we call them a lot of things but an offer is just something of value that you're offering to your audience the landing page which is really misused a lot is the vehicle by which they get that offer. So the landing page is just a tool for them to download and provide you information. Um, I hear people use landing page for a page that you land on, and that's not it. Um, these are the elements of a great offer. You just need to make sure the value of it is communicated because nobody's going to submit their data if there isn't some value. Um, appropriate images. I would, steer away from the generic ones you know the handshakes and everything else unless it really communicates something about the offer i wouldn't bother but if it does it's a good idea if you have a, a white paper or something else doing a box shot or a screenshot of the actual cover page those kinds of things problem solving copy or benefits copy and social proof or quotes references people you know how many people have downloaded this before have you you know is it the most popular piece on your site those kinds of things and then your action buttons i'd stay away from red any other color is fine red still means stop to most people so then the landing page the landing page elements that you'll need um, and this is just the way that your your audience is going to download your offer that's a landing page purpose it should have no other navigation shouldn't be part of your website it's just a lead capture so you want a lot of the same things around an offer and you want them to be reassured when they click that link and they come to this landing page that they've gotten the right thing they're not getting a bait and switch kind of deal so the headline needs to match up with what your link was the image should be appropriate and show them what they're going to get the description should have some bullet points in it and say exactly why this is so cool and great if you have room for some social proof that's awesome um, short lead capture form to begin with and ask for more pieces later on but in the beginning I think we only ask for two first name and email but if you want to ask for more that's fine just know that it adds each additional field adds some friction and decrease can decrease the likelihood that somebody fills it out all right and then step seven promoting your content I didn't go into huge depth here but social media is probably one of the easiest ways if you have a good following or a good good list if not 
I would say leverage your publishers. If you put, you know, at Acubatica on your posts, we have a service that's going to pick those up and help promote your content. Um, group sites, like I mentioned, are always looking for good content. If you've got something that's great, I would say that offer it to them. Google Ads, you know, gets a little pricey. You have to have a budget for that and you have to have a plan. Um, Facebook and Twitter are a lot more affordable if you want to do some sponsored or boosted posts. Outbound email is still okay if you're, you, know, you have to have realistic expectations around that in terms of response rate. You know, one percent is going to be your average, depending on if they know you already or if they know Acumatica already. Email signatures are great for promoting events. We do it for Summit, but if you have a webinar series, awesome to put that in your signature and have everybody in your organization do it. And then um, an overlooked resource, I think a lot are ISVs and establishing a relationship with them to cross promote what you do. Step eight, measuring your practice your progress. So I didn't I don't have a form to share with you, but um, the Excel sheets that we worked on before when we were doing the planning, I would say um, at least at the very least quarterly, you should be checking in and measuring your results. I do it a whole lot more than that for mine. And I did it that way at Crestwood as well. Um, for Acumatica, things that we look at every two weeks and we send a report to the leadership team are our traffic. Um, the number of leads, which is basically our form fills, and our paid ad spend versus results, so that we're, you know, we're constantly tweaking and making sure that what, we're, what we have out there is working and that we're driving leads for our partner channel. And then monthly, we're really stringent on our budget spend around all of our marketing activities and conversions on our lead versus goal. Um, this is a point where I think uh, Tyler and, and Cliff could probably help us out a little bit and tell us what they measure. And um, I know they have some content, some examples to share with us as well. You probably want to. Tyler, yourself. you want to take it or you want me to go in from here? Um, Donna, I just want to chime in. This is Cliff Cook. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I just want to chime in and speak with regards to how we measure our progress over at Quantum Leap, uh, and we measure it weekly uh, in nice. terms of traffic and conversions. Uh, our conversions and our forms, uh, we receive those on the fly on a daily basis. Uh, currently, we're not doing any ads right now, paid ads. Uh, and uh, also monthly, yes, we do budgeting and actual conversion and leads. Okay, and Cliff, remind us, you're, you're a bar and you're focused on an industry? Uh, yes, yes, we're, we're focused on uh, the cannabis hemp industry. Okay. Right? And um, when people hear cannabis hemp, they tend to think that, you know, uh, those leads just walk in the door. And that's, <laughs> that's not a true statement, you know. Uh, yep. It takes a that lot of work. work. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work uh, to gain the exposure. So, uh, and we'll touch here momentarily with regard mm -hmm. to some of the things that we've done in the past, some of the things that we're doing, and a lot of the things that Acumatica has helped us with. So, okay. to make awesome. us successful with this. All right. And Tyler, did you have some? Yeah, so this is Tyler Mullen with Kenzium. We are an Acumatica VAR as well as an ISV. And I would say, um, obviously, you know, we look at the analytics. Um, my f core focus uh, campaign-wise is email marketing. And so I, I probably spend less time looking at our overall web traffic, um, you know, coming into the homepage and the about us and all that other stuff. And I'm more interested in who's reading our emails, how often they're reading our emails, and then who's actually clicking on the link to get to wherever I'm sending them. So I would say that is my, you know, number one focus on, um, on prospects, converting prospects. Um, so, and I, you know, I, and I understand web traffic is important and, 
and all that, but you know, it, it fluctuates for us, right? So we go to events and um, after an event, a trade show or something like that, it'll, it'll skyrocket and then it'll level off. Or we'll have um, you know a new blog come out and it'll go up and then it'll level off and that's all good information. It makes us understand you know whether these um, campaigns that we're running during the trade show or the blog are actually driving people to our website, which is the goal. But um, who are these people, right? Um, it's a, it's a good I guess kind of base for us to understand who actually is coming to our website because we could have a thousand people come and um, they could all be you know students something like that so um, with email marketing it's actually focused we actually know who's reading it and we they're all our target market so yeah right well that's, that's a great point that you make but you're lucky that to have a list you've already got yeah and you're, yeah. you're marketing to, to a list so yes. you're in a great spot. Um, there are partners who are building it and even your list when you send out email marketing they have to go somewhere so those links are usually um, going back to a website and absolutely you know, a landing page and that kind of thing so we want to make sure that our partners understand how to get those basics in place and then absolutely I think uh, you could teach a class on email marketing probably <laughs> <laughs> Let me sign you up for summit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I will let you guys dive into your um, your presentation. Perfect. Yeah. So good segue. Um, so Kenzie's marketing approach, right? So we have our inbound marketing uh, for a website. Anybody who's coming into you know our website, reading our emails, uh, any trade shows, things like that, and then we have. Uh, more of an outbound approach, which is, um, sorry, the trade shows would be more of an outbound approach. Um, and we have an inside sales team that cold calls and, and does prospecting emails and, and goes to the trade show. So my, my core focus is inbound and, and what I'm doing on the website. And in this, in this industry, the B2B buyer, um, is not just one person, right? There's a there's a couple of people that are actually buying, and sometimes they're not even the ones that are going to be using Acumatica, right? Um, so I want to take a step back. So the buyers in this day and age, they don't want to talk to a sales rep, and they usually do. Let's see here, 10.4 sources of research before they actually contact a a salesperson. And by the time they do to contact a salesperson, they're 70% through the buying decision already. So I use this information and I say, okay, what kind of content am I gonna have on the website? I'm not gonna focus a whole lot of my effort and content on trying to educate you know, people about Acumatica, trying to educate them about the industry and, and all that. I think that's, that's really good if you're trying to get people in the top of the funnel and move them along the process, but that could take you know, a year or two years to do, right? So what I'm after is, are these buyers that are, have already done most of their research. They've already gone to Acumatica.com and figured out what ERP is, they're interested in it, and they are 70% through the buying process. Now, when they come to Kenzium, they are most likely looking for a partner to work with, right? So we, we know at this point they're pretty, committed to the softwares that they're going to buy. So it could be, you know, Acumatica or NetSuite, whatever it is, but they know they're going to buy ERP. They're looking for a partner. And so my content focuses on um, how Kenzium is going to be a great partner for them. You know, we, we've done this stuff before. We'll, we'll launch and implement, and we've got a bunch of partners, you know, if you want to integrate, stuff like that. So my target is a distributor or manufacturer um, that's doing more than $5 million in revenue. Uh, they've probably purchased the ERP before, and the buyers that are involved, the, the job roles that are involved, uh, usually are in finance, accounting, and the IT department. So like I said before, these, these guys aren't necessarily the users of the software, but they're the buyers because somebody, you know, the users have a problem and they've made it, you know, kind of noteworthy enough to get other people involved to start looking for solutions. So 
when I'm thinking about my content, I want to be able to provide the correct piece of information for the correct people that are actually buying. So for the finance people, obviously they're interested in how much ERP is going to cost. Um, finance and accounting, IT department, they just really want to know how the ERP is going to fix all the problems that people are coming to them with. Um, so they could be looking for functionality, integration, um, how their old legacy system is outdated, lack of support, scalability, and, and complexity. So these are all these problems, quote unquote, that I like to solve with my content. And it could be uh, a blog or a video uh, or case study, depending on where they are. And I provide them with the correct piece of content at the, at the right time. I mean, that's the theory. That's what I'm trying to go after. It's not always... Um, you know, accurate, but that's my ideal goal is to provide them if they're looking for um, a solution to all of the accounting mess that they have to provide them with a piece of content that actually talks specifically to that. Um, so those are the the types of content. So demo, best practices, case studies, but the overall messaging I'm trying to convey to them because if they're on our website, they're on a partner's website, they're probably looking for a partner to implement and help them out with this. And so my messaging is, you know, speed. We'll get this implemented in less than six months. We're going to be an awesome partner for you guys. Um, we understand your business model. I feel like that is um, a high priority for all these prospects that are coming to our website. When I talk to our salespeople or do interviews with our customers, they're it always comes up. Do you understand our business model? I want to feel unique. Everybody wants to feel unique, right? But do you understand what's actually going on? And if you can actually understand and, and have a conversation with these people, then the sales process just flies by. Um, and then there's other things like consultation advice and, and providing self-help materials. Um, so I hope, I mean, hopefully that gives you an idea of, of what we do. So Email marketing, all the prospects that I that I go after, I understand exactly what job role and function that they're working with. I provide them each a specific email or um, a blog or a case study through that email to to go through onto our website, and then I just start kind of working them through a um, process. So that's great. No, that's perfect. Um, you're probably more sophisticated than most of our, our our partners, which is wonderful that we are able to get your your approach here. Um, yeah, and I'll speak on that too, right? I'm a I'm a one man shop here, um, and I know a lot of the other VARs they don't necessarily have somebody devoted to marketing. I am devoted to marketing, but all of this it takes a lot of upfront work. Um, I understand. I use a software called Dot Digital for all my email marketing. And once you set up these automatic campaigns, it's just a matter of taking your list and and throwing it into the funnel. So um, this could be a week long email campaign. It could be four weeks, whatever it is. I just take a list, I throw it in, and all my emails are created. It'll get shot out maybe a week in advance or a week after week after week. And then um, I'm just tracking to make sure they're following through the funnel. Um, and then, you know, all the content like a blog or video and things like that, all outsource to other companies to have it written up. Um, my, really, my job's easy, right? I just, I <laughs> look at the analytics. I, I see, I try to understand what's going on. If people aren't going into my, my onto my website or if they're not actually reading my material, that's just a sign to me to change something. So. Right. No, and it's good that you're watching. It's that's the the stuff that a lot of us miss is we throw things at the wall and we never see if they stick. So um, just because we're busy creating more stuff to throw at the wall, <laughs> so <Right. laughs> that's uh, focus is important, and that's a great example. All right, let's move on and get a little insight into quantum leaf's marketing approach okay um our marketing approach uh is a little different than uh, the traditional marketing um we uh I, I can say acumatica has been of tons of value to us with building our marketing program uh we utilize the the playbook 
right? And building out a website, we didn't provide a ton of content, right? Uh, we started out slow and steady. We started out with our white paper on our landing page um, and then moved on to uh, promoting uh, trade show events that we'll be attending mm -hmm. and uh, then moved on to social media postings, blogs, and things of that nature. And uh, we're adding some final pieces to our site currently, uh, like things like uh, testimonials and things like that. Uh, we do very little email campaigns. We do do email campaigns, but our email campaigns are based around trade show events that we're attending. Uh, we do uh, trip campaigns. We do initial campaigns to let them know uh, that we'll be attending these shows, come out, visit, talk to us, network, things of that nature. And then we do follow-ups, you know, with regards to if you're interested, you know, uh, let's set up a, a product demonstration and see uh, if we can move on from there. Um, with regards to the playbook, right? Like I said, this this industry that we're in is still in its infancy stages, right? So uh, a lot of our prospects we're utilizing QuickBooks and realize that they need something more than just QuickBooks, along with um, <clears throat> our cultivation piece that plugs into Acumatica, right? So Acumatica is the heart of it. They need that part. And then our solution just enhances Acumatica's platform, uh, which is great for us. Uh, we've been at this for about two years now. Uh, we're consistently growing. Um, we've added certain features to our website that enhances it and helps us, such as our uh, demo registration form that we just added a month ago. And uh, we've already signed up, as you can see, 11 registrations within one month. Uh, the traffic has increased uh, twofold. You know, our goal is 400% uh, and we're currently at about 387% in growth uh, with regards to traffic on our site. And uh, I contribute that to, once again, doing social media posts, uh, having helpful information on our webpage, uh, driving traffic to our webpage via LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, which has been tremendous for us. Uh, we put a marketing plan together initially, and we're following it to the T. And it seems to be working for us. So my advice to any of the prospects or current bars uh, within the Acumatica ecosystem is to utilize those resources that Acumatica provides for you. It works. And as you can see here in our stats, this is all from following that playbook. Uh, you can see the growth over the last two years, organic growth, and also uh, social media. These are some great numbers. This is yeah. wonderful. Thanks and, for sharing. And, yeah, and it's consistently growing every day, every day. And this is why uh, I check our stats every day to see where we're at, see what we need to do, where we need to improve, and things of that nature. And like Tyler said, we're a one-man marketing shop. It's just me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to see these numbers. And I'm hoping they just continue to grow. Uh, that's their game plan, right? Right, so, exactly. <laughs> right. So, so they provided yeah. us with some samples here of what they yes. sent out, which is great. And this will be included in, uh, in our deck. Yeah, and, and that's that's just one of example of some of the marketing material that Acumatica provides to its partners. And as you can see, we took that and we made it our own. We added our logo and our contact information, but that's all Acumatica content that's on the marketing form. Awesome. Right? Yeah, and um, yes, this is some of the other stuff you know that we utilize um, the registrations. I can't say enough about 
And this is all from promoting Quantum Leap and Acumatica on social media and driving that traffic to our website. Uh, we're proud to be an Acumatica partner. Uh, it fits our solution. They work hand in hand. And I, I just can't give Donna and Sarita and the rest of you guys enough credit for what you're doing uh, in terms of your marketing program. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> and thanks for sharing, both of you. Um, it's very helpful to see two very different stories about mm -hmm. how you approach marketing. And yes. it's it illustrates the point that no one thing is a surefire work for anybody. You, mm -hmm. you have to figure out what's going to work for you. So right. that's the end of our presentation materials. I do have an appendix that has a bunch of resources and tools, some quest commonly asked questions that we've gone through before, but that'll all be um, part of the deck that we send out with the recording. Let everyone know that we're have our next webinar is uh, September 24th. And yep. it's about the R2 Roadshow series. So if you want to just close us out with that. Yeah, yeah. So our uh, our VP of Partner Programs and Strategy, Jeff Ashley, is going to be giving us an exciting sneak peek at new product releases to be announced at the upcoming uh, Roadshow series this fall. So it gives us a chance to learn about R2 and how it'll increase productivity and accelerate growth with new enhancements for your existing and future clients. Um, so that roadshow registration is open and complimentary. Um, All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.